Tena Markadu, Cyprus is associated with the sun and the beach. There are a lot of interesting things to do for people who want to stray away from the beach for a little while. That you're absolutely right, Owen. There's so many other things to do. There's the nature trails where you can admire lovely views wherever you go, any nature trail you decide to go. There's a lot of ancient culture for those interested in ancient culture, archaeological sites. There's uh, religious monuments. There's a lot of other activities that have a lot of interaction with the locals, like uh, basket making and cooking demonstration uh, and many other uh, local arts and crafts. So that gives uh, people a chance to get to know the real people of Cyprus. Wine is one of the most important export products of Cyprus. Uh, and in the last 20 years, I can say, there has been a huge improvement in our wines because young people studied the subject and they came back and have taken up either the wineries of their uh, grandparents or parents or a lot of them made their own. Uh, and we have uh, an excellent quality of wines. This is the result of uh, the uh, new wineries that we have in the last 20 years. One of the treasures of Cyprus is the small villages and one of the real treasures is the agritourism product that is growing in some of those villages. Yes, agritourism is growing and growing and uh, it's um, quite a, a different kind of uh, tourism. It's um, something that you would not experience at a hotel. You come into this house, which is traditional. You have all the traditional style, but at the same time, all your comfort. So it will be a lovely shower and everything. But then again, this big traditional bed that our grandmas had, uh, and it will be the yard with whatever they had in the yard. And of course, the landlord, the uh, uh, wife, uh, the husband is there to welcome and in our case we were at Bavla uh, at, with, at Donna Marie's house, uh, Donna Marie with George and they took a great care of us and it's not just accommodation, it's uh, you can ask for breakfast, you can ask for various meals so that's, there's your chance to get to know some real local food and this is what we experienced on the day we went there. Experiential tourism, it's a big buzzword, something I hadn't come across before, beekeeping. Beekeeping, I was at the same village, Avavla village, but of course bee, um, beekeeping is everywhere on the island. Uh, the honey is of excellent quality, sweet from all these blossoms that we have everywhere. And uh, the um, beekeeping is uh, something that we're always wondering how do they do all these things with the honey? So yes, we put on our forms and we will, it was like becoming a beekeeper for a while. And we were all protected. We go, go, went there and we went very close to the hives, but they couldn't come and do anything to us. And we saw everything, how it was done. And that was really interesting. And, and of course, honey is central to the history of Cyprus. In ancient Greece, uh, or in the ancient years as well, even in Cyprus, people did not know anything about sugar. They knew honey. This was their sweet things. So that's, this is what they knew. Sugar came much, much later. So honey is pure sweetness. The Flamingos of Cyprus, uh, this is uh, an interesting period for people that are visiting the island because uh, we, um, we have these salt lakes these salt lakes actually are, um, they don't have water all the year round. It, they get their water from rain, but there is salt from the sea on the ground. So when it starts raining, the water, uh, it fills up with water and flamingos come here. This is an important uh, stop for the flamingos. They'll make uh, their break here. They'll stay either a few days or a bit longer. And there's more and more coming. They come from Europe and they're going towards Africa. And in all the salt lakes in Cyprus, we have like 12 to 16,000 flamingos coming every year. Ladies' fingers, if you look at uh, nice ladies' fingers, then uh, this is what this suite looks like. It's a dough with uh, 
filling of crushed almonds, uh, cinnamon, and uh, sugar, and uh, sorry, rose water and sugar, yes. And uh, you uh, put it in this dough, you roll it, and then you fry it in peanut oil, and then you put syrup on top. So that's Lady's Fingers, and it's one of the very tasty sweet specialities of the island. We've also seen how pureka is done. Pureka is uh, similar but the filling is a bit different. It's this anari soft cheese which is the, the yet froth, the milk froth that stays after halloumi is made. You know about the local halloumi cheese. So the, we collect this uh, froth cheese. Can you say froth cheese? Yeah. The yep. froth cheese and you add a little bit of cinnamon sugar and then you this will be the filling for this uh, bureka uh, you fry it in the peanut oil and then you put a little bit of icing sugar and some cinnamon on top so that's again another very tasty sweet and if you want to say to your girl to your lady that she's very beautiful then you can tell her in Greek bureka of course you can say for men too and you will say then purekos and if you want to say for little children uh, two boys you'll say purekui and two little girls purekua basket weaving we've had petros petros is one of the young men that decided he does not want to leave the um, in a town anymore so he left the town he left his job at the hotel and he went and found a nice house uh, well actually he turned it into a nice house it was an old house in a village and he's made it a very uh, beautiful all done in the traditional way he does baskets uh, and she does demonstrations to people but he also knows how to make halloumi so he also does, does that and he uh, guests will go to his house at the village to see him uh, he has then coffee for them, lemonade, uh, and uh, he, he could offer a light brunch as well. Tomatoes, cucumbers, halloumi cheese, and ari cheese with honey, carob syrup. Uh, so that is one of the best activities that tourists can do also. Left Caralais is very famous and Leonardo da Vinci was impressed. Lefkara is a village and it gets its name from the um, mountains around it, Lefka Ori, which means white mountains because of the beautiful limestone that there is there. And that's also one of the things you admire at the uh, village, these beautiful stone built houses with that local stone. Uh, but the village is also known for the lace and uh, Leonardo da Vinci had visited this village and he was so impressed by this lace that he actually ordered one for the uh, cathedral in my land and um, the uh, ladies at that time wanted to thank him so they've named one of the motifs uh, of the lace after his name Leonardo da Vinci and that looks like a half rhombus and Lefkara also has a reputation for silver. People that are into the uh, into making silver jewelry, uh, handmade silver jewelry. There's um, especially a lot of jewels with the filigrant method, uh, and you will see some beautiful designs. Some inspired from the ancient culture of the island, and some uh, with modern designs. Uh, people have adjusted to the new style as well, but. There's also a blend of the old and the new. St. Lazarus. According to the religious tradition, St. Lazarus um, has lived his second life in Lanaka. He was assigned by Apostle Paul as the Bishop of Kition. Kition was the ancient city kingdom of Lanaka and uh, he died there. So his relics were there and then the Byzantine Emperor had given money for the church to be built and as an exchange he would get the relics of, the, of St. Lazarus but the locals kept a part of the relics there so there's still a part of the relics of, the Saint, of St. Lazarus and Christians, uh, Orthodox Christians are consider these relics very very important so they feel that they are uh, blessed when they're in the St. Lazarus church and a beautiful crypt where the uh, tomb of uh, Lazarus was uh, so that's also there to see <clears throat> and the church is uh, goes back in the 10th century and it's uh, one of the churches that has uh, the type of uh, the uh, churches with the many domes so it's three in the middle two on the side 
Uh, it's uh, stone built inside there's no wall paintings but you can say that it's uh, it's a simple but at the same time one of the most beautiful churches of the island in the, in the pillars in the four pillars in the church you can even see ancient capitals which have been taken from ancient temples and they are built in the pillars the resort of Ayanapa is very very famous uh, the beaches here are among the best in Europe the golden sandy beaches of Ayanapa and Protaras, that's this is the Famagusta district, are definitely amongst the best beaches of uh, Europe. We Every year there's these blue flags that we receive and it seems that uh, Cyprus has uh, quite a big number and we are proud that these beaches have excellent quality of water, blue crystal clear water, turquoise beaches and of course this is this comes from the beautiful golden sand of the area the sculpture park it's uh, something that is uh, has started a few years ago and it invites artists from many countries to come and do their sculpture and they'll stay here for a period until their sculpture is finished and they'll uh, then their sculpture will be there at the sculpture park uh, it's um, at a location where there's a beautiful view to the sea. So for us, this is important because that means that this will be a monument of nature and it will always be there. And there's a symposium each year. So this year is from the 21st of March until the 21st of April, one month long. We have this symposium. So there will be some more sculptures for people to see. This, there is a holy cage which is dedicated to two saints of the um, Christian Orthodox religion. They are called Anargiri, Ayi Anargiri. Anargiri means no money. These were people that could heal people, you can say doctors. Um, they did this without getting paid, so the um, people called them Anargiri. The, uh, and uh, the um, cage was dedicated to them, but then people built a new chapel as well. But the, um, the cage, where it is the cage, you, there's steps, you go down, and then you are at a beautiful view from the crystal uh, blue and green uh, sea that you see there. And um, when it's winter time, it's a little bit stormy, but in the summertime, lots of people are swimming there. And from the rocks, there's a lot of people that are doing their jumps. <laughs> And so if you go many years back, uh, the ones picking the uh, grapes at the vineyards were actually the donkeys. Uh, but like in many countries, donkeys are not needed anymore. Uh, so um, we do have the donkey sanctuaries that people take care of them. But uh, there is a lot of donkey farms now as well. And um, it gives a chance to people to come and get to know this animal. They are so cute. They are very uh, fond of people, they love people, they see people and they go towards them, they're very friendly uh, and you can go on donkey ride uh, and there's um, in other farms as well you can taste the donkey milk which is one of the best medicines for many many things. Cyprus is uh, famous for many many other things amongst that strawberries. Um, we've visited a st uh, strawberry farm and um, people were surprised to see that strawberries were not on the ground, but actually higher. Uh, and um, you could easily pick them up. They, were, they had lovely red colors, uh, the ones that were already ripe, and they had an excellent taste. The, uh, we have strawberries many, many months of the year. Um, March, April is the peak uh, for the production of strawberries. And uh, this village in uh, Famagusta, the Ringa, is very famous for its strawberries. They even have a strawberry festival. The Ringa, a shipwreck discovered by this uh, local diver. And on that day that he discovered it, there was a big storm. So he had to come up and then he lost the position where this shipwreck was. And you can imagine how bad he felt about it. So he was uh, trying for two years to find this position and he managed to do it after two years. And uh, then uh, underwater archaeologists, uh, specialists came to Cyprus from Pennsylvania University. They had uh, lifted the um, 
shipwreck. It was uh, after research, they found out that the shipwreck was, uh, goes back in the fourth century before Christ, and it had been sailing for 80 years. They, they found the shipwreck with, with around 400 of amphoras. Uh, they found um, even some of the food they were eating, for example, seeds of figs, grapes, and even almonds. It was a sack with lots and lots of almonds, and they're still there. Uh, as well as uh, some uh, um, plates that uh, shows that there was like four people on that boat. The, um, they've made a replica of this shipwreck and uh, we have two of them actually. One is exhibited in Thalassa Museum which is in Ayanapa. So whoever comes in, Aya in Ayanapa should definitely visit Thalassa Museum. Thalassa means sea and um, the replica is there. There's uh, a second replica, and with that second replica, in, uh, back in 2004 when we had the Olympic Games in Athens, this um, boat sailed off from ancient port of Limassol, which is uh, in the south of the island, and there were young people dressed in ancient Greek uniforms, and they were taking bronze as a present to the government of Greece for the medals because, of course, the connection is copper. Uh, the island was very rich in copper. So that's, uh, this is what they did in 2004. Um, having a lot of tourists on the island, tourists is the main uh, financial resource of the island. Uh, and that's because people are very hospitable. And other from the beauties uh, of the island, there's uh, the, so many other things that people can enjoy, and that's food. There's so many fresh vegetables everywhere with excellent taste. This is what all the guests are saying. The tomatoes are so tasty, the cucumbers, the lettuce, the, all the greens for the salad, the um, food, the meat, the potatoes, the, uh, all this grows in Cyprus. You can say that anything grows on the island except pineapple maybe, that's the far exotic fruit that doesn't grow here. But we have other tropical fruit that grows here uh, in Paphos, west of Cyprus, like the bananas, avocados, mangoes, papayas. Uh, and it seems that the fruit is excellent and very, very, very sweet. Uh, so anything grows here. This is like a paradise on earth. So the, the guests get to taste this food. And I must say that the portions are really generous. Um, if you've heard of the meze, I'm telling about the, you, you have tasted it yourself. Meze is this selection of the local dishes. It's either with meat and vegetables or it's with fish. There's always so, so much food there and we're really generous with our portions and we like people to feel that they've had lovely and lots of food here in Cyprus. Thank you very much, Tena. It's been an amazing trip. Thank you very much for coming here and we are waiting from everybody from Ireland to come and visit us.